Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Just hope uh, everyone out there is having a good breeding season. Um, I'll elaborate a bit more on how my season is going um, as the episode progresses because it's not been with the British birds anyway as fruitful as what I'd imagine it to be. So when this airs, um, I'll be hopefully sat outside enjoying the sun. Having a nice Foster's and maybe a nice chicken madras, um, enjoying the sun. After all, it is technically summer now, so I'm going to go and enjoy it. So, a nice quick episode for you today, just to keep you informed of what's going on in the bird room. So, the canaries. Canaries are, um, I know a lot of people always say to me, yeah, canaries are easy, canaries are easy. They've been fruitful, They've. I've got... A lot of um, young fives, um, some I'm really happy with, uh, that are up to shore standard and across the colours as well, so uh, can't complain at them. They seem to be basically doing exactly what they're meant to do, uh, having eggs, rearing the young and having no issues. And with the, um, especially with the fives, I'm using them more as... I know some weird people won't like what I'm going to say, but as feeders now, because uh, with, with so much as the mules hybrid pairs and the British birds, they're not being as good as what they should be. But there's not only me in this situation, I've spoke to quite a few people that's in the same situation with, no matter what breed it is, whether it be red poles, um, green finches, and, and other British birds alike, that they're struggling quite a bit to get them to do the job whether it be clear eggs feeding the young or that type of stuff it's not been as as good as it should be for this time of year when it comes to uh, the mules that we're attempting to breed this year um, only got a couple of muling pairs actually active now um, one being the linnet muling pairs uh, we have had I would dare say uh, 15 young linnet mules out of one cockbird and this cockbird is is really one of the if you're looking to mule a cockbird that you really want to have in your place uh, every time I put him with an end he seems to have done the job uh, except for he smashes eggs so I'll take him away and I've left the uh, the ends be and they seem to really young perfectly fine I mean I've got K6 and 7 that is behind me um, I've got young out of both them pairs, uh, linnet mules. Over the period of, of moving them around and, and when they're fledged, I have lost one or two because I can't even put my finger on why it was. They just, um, as I weaned them away at 30 odd days old, uh, they just seem to just put the legs up in the air and not want to be here anymore. So. Um, like I said, breeding mules and hybrids is always going to be a testing time, so why do we do it? <laughs> but, the Goldie Mule pair, um, first round what we had with them was clear. Um, second round, uh, the Cockbird weren't even ready, I know it weren't ready, but the, um, the Norwich was. We've got one egg that is full this time, so we'll see, and that's under a feeder pair at the moment. So we'll see how they get on. Uh, it's due to watch in the next couple of days, so if it does hatch, I'll uh, show it in the next episode. The uh, other muling pair that we did have, which was a chaffinch, um, not a chaffinch, a greenfinch with a Norwich cock. She had two rounds, both rounds were clear. Um, but now I've, I've took the Norwich away and I'll explain why as I move on to the greenfinch side of things. The hybridising pair is absolutely rubbish. Um, I don't know, it, it's it's one of them things anyone will tell you that tries to mule or even the, the rarer mules, your crossbow mules and hybridising pairs your golden mules, sisky mules, linnet mules, they're the easier mules to uh, to do uh, but when it comes to hybrids it's a totally different type of thing and you need a bit of luck and you need a, a well bonded pair now all the three hybridising pairs that'll be the the chaffinch hybrid pairs and the bullfinch hybrid pairs um the ends are brilliant i mean both chaffinch hybrid pairs the um the ends have been squatting for the greeny cocks 
and so far I've not seen them tread properly yet. I mean the, the bully um, greeny ivory pair, we, we know we've had full eggs out of them but she seems to come off the boil now and we'll just have to see what happens with those and like I said you need a bit of luck at the end of the day. We've had, we've had the full eggs from them so the, the cockbird done the job but now it just seems to be a stagnant point where we'll just have to wait and see what happens. We've also, as I mentioned before, we've got the red poles in here. Um, red poles are doing actually really quite well. Um, they're not surprising, they're not exactly hard to breed red poles if I'm being utterly honest. Um, we've got a pair in this, this cage in, uh, it's the flight cage but it's one section of it, uh, number 26. Um, this is a pair that doesn't belong to me, it's one of my friends that I'm breeding for him. Uh, she's got three young in there and both parents are doing a fantastic job of bringing them up. Uh, they was run two, three days ago now. Um, but anyone that breeds red poles or siskins know how fast that they progress from hatching to leaving the nest. So no doubt that they'll, they'll have another round. My own red pole um, pairing, I got one young out of them, uh, which was under canaries. Um, I explained that last time, so I'm going to go over that. They went down to nest again and all was clear, which is ironic really. Um, so I've moved them and I've brought them into this place now and they're building up again now, so they should be back on eggs soon. As we're talking about red poles though, um, everyone knows uh, my good friend Chris Harrison. I acquired some, um, I'm just feeling now. Um, some red poles from him um, and we're going to give them a go um, as start of the British birds for next year which towards the end of the episode if you'll um, stay tuned till the end I'll explain why and what's going to happen next year. Jump back to the canaries right so with the fives um, we we've got over 100 fives um, like I said earlier we've got quite a few that um, I'm really liking the look of at this point. So I'm not going to talk too much on them because that would bore some people um, going over what I've gone over last year and earlier on in the season. Um, basically, out of the 28, uh, 30 ends, we've only got 25 of the um, ends actually done the job. We've seemingly had a game of two halves with the birds. We've got half the fives that's doing an outstanding job. There's one down here in case number 17 that has actually reared nine chicks, four in the first round, five in the second. So that'll be a dump this season. Then you've got ends where they will only feed basically one or two in a nest. And I, I, I think this is more down to that they can see a weakness in a chick and they won't, they'll only feed the stronger ones. I have tried to switch them around once or twice to um, to get the weaker ones into some that's basically the same size in the nest as others, but then the ends in that nest won't even feed them either. So I do think that there must be something wrong with the eggs. I have checked um, a lot of the young ones this year for black spot, and out of all the eggs and chicks that we've had hatch, I would say less than 1% have had black spot and we've not treated them this year with anything like grog which I used previously and obviously I cleaned them out at the beginning of the season but the birds seem to be quite good in that respect so let's switch again to the bloody borders. We, we started off with four pairs, I lost one hen from one pair and one cock from another which is quite good that way. Um, so I put obviously a pair together and make three end, uh, three pairs up. Cage number two, uh, that's the pair now that um, I made up. She sat on eggs. I have seen them tread, but I don't think they're full. I mean, they're only four days in at the minute, so um, we'll soon see over the next couple of days. Cage number three is the, the better pairing. Now, they had... At the beginning of the year, we had one young off them. Got to about five days old, and, and I explained before it just just went. 
we had one following off them again and which is due today or tomorrow um, it's actually technically due today but it's not actually as yet um, that is actually currently under a five again but same thing only one egg full um, nine times out of ten if you think that if you're getting dead in shell or clear eggs is there's something clearly wrong with one of the um, the birds that you're pairing it to, whether it be the cock or the end. I mean, they are bigger birds, so you're not expected to get five uh, full eggs every time, but more than one would be appreciated, if I'm honest. So, we'll see how that progresses. But they're not going anywhere, even next year. Uh, because we've not done brilliantly this year with them, doesn't mean saying next year they're going to do even just as bad. So, I'm going to carry on with them and hopefully we can get some out of them next year or even the year after. I'm not going to just out them because they've not done well this year because they're not going to take that much room up in um, having two or three pairs anyway. So let's quickly talk about the green finches and the linux. So we've got um, the five pairs of green finches and I'll tell you something. Sometimes you think to yourself, if you've had the type of year that... Um, I've had so far it's it's not even worth mentioning but I'm gonna mention exactly what what's going off because like I said I've spoke to a few people and they're having the same problems one pair has never even um, had a full egg one pair has not even made a bloody nest actually tell her like she's she's built up now so hopefully we'll see she might be a late developer so we'll see um, others They've had eggs, they've had chicks, and not fed them. So, every out of all the pairs we've got, not one of them has fed a chick this year. <coughs> we have, however, got three uh, away, well away now. They would be five weeks old. Um, there's one, there's two ends, one cock. The cock bird looks um, looks to be a, a, a good standard as it is. So. Some say quality, not quantity, but to get the quality, you need to be the quantity, in my opinion. So they've been bought up by the fives. It's hit four. Number six bought, uh, bought one up as well and done an outstanding job. Um, it's one that is the, the mule impaired, so it's one that I'll have to watch for later on if I need to uh, put a, a young and like a green finch under her because that it's a bigger bird, she'll... Uh, get more of the food into them. The other, I've got another three green finches, uh, again, out of the flights that just, just never fed. So took them away, put them under the fives and they're doing a, a fantastic job again of bringing them up. The one from the last episode, which I've shown you, which the end, basically built on the top of the chapel nest. I knew it would end up in disaster, and it, it always seems to do that. I went in to check the eggs. Uh, two had rolled out to the back of the nest, so they never even got to sit anyway. And um, the other two, yeah, they fall, so, yeah. I've took them away, rather than uh, trying to, as they try to turn and she might knock them out, because it's not a brilliant place to uh, build a nest. So then again, they're under a fife. If anyone's asking why I'm doing it like that rather than letting them bring them up themselves, well, the main reason, or the only reason, is, is breeding stock for next year. I don't like, or I'm saying I don't like, I like my line of birds as they are. And trying to get quality birds that would match these is not exactly something that everyone you can just go and ask anyone like you can with a five. There's a load of fives being bred and green finches as the quality is getting better um, there's fewer and fewer people that you can ask for an outcross. So like I said all I'm basically doing is securing um, a breeding platform for next year. I know they're not going to be as good as what they would have been if they would have been bought by the, um, the parent birds but at least I'll have something to work with next year. So, as of next year, I'm going to really cut back with the fives and concentrate more again like I used to do when everyone keeps telling me, yes, I'm known for breeding British birds rather than fives. 
So that is the reason I've got some more of the red poles in again for breeding stock for next year and you'll be seeing a lot more of the uh, British native birds, mules hybrids in here next year than what there is this year. So definitely something to look forward to. Um, I've got the uh, the bird room now as a whole exactly as I want it and I can breed or hopefully breed uh, most British birds successfully in here. So we will see and not just that, I've got birds out on loan here, there and everywhere. So I'm hoping that if, if my birds at like the Greenfinches don't successfully breed, I've got something to come back on from the people that I've given out cross to and hopefully we can uh, bring them back in and, and try and put them back into the line. Just the last thing before I do leave, I, I did mention it's going to be quite a short episode. Um, There'll be plenty more to come, so don't um, get disheartened that it's not going to be as long as usual. The Linux. Now you'd think that Linux themselves would bring up their own. Like I said, it's something in the water, or hopefully not. Um, didn't, uh, they didn't feed, and there was a nest of five, down to a nest of four, which are being bought up um, by a pair of fives that I know bought up. Um, some fives early on in the year for me um, did a decent job of bringing them up so I put the fire, uh, the um, Linux under there and they've done a, a decent enough job and they've literally just jumped nest today so yeah like I said it's been a, a bit of um, a testing time so far but then again the weather's stable now so chances are the breeding will probably pick up over the next couple of weeks but like I said, I'm not complaining. If you're breeding birds and it went, you bred a shed load of birds every year, it won't be as challenging for me. And I like a bit of a challenge. So carry on and um, try and see what I can do later on down the line. And who knows? This time of year is the time of year where you could really surprise yourself and chuck a couple of ivory pairs together and. and just like that, you could breed something you never even planned for. So we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I've uh, all the sorting's done now, so whatever's paired up is going to be paired up. I'm not going to be changing anything around. So we'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your evening. It's a lovely evening out there. So I will see you in the next episode with hopefully a bit better news on the British birds like so the canaries are canaries are doing the job. The British birds are there or thereabouts. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. And if you have liked our episode, please give it a thumbs up. And any um, questions, comments, leave them in the section below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.